Reproductive freedom affects all of us, doesn't it? But there are extremists working harder than ever to drag us back to a past that we thought was long over. This afternoon, I want to tell you a story about uh, something that happened a long time ago, but one that has really been on my mind recently with all that's been happening. A story that might not be unfamiliar to you. When I was in high school, one of my friends got pregnant. It was the late 60s, and abortion was illegal in Pennsylvania, where I grew up. To end the pregnancy, she told me her only recourse was to undergo a psychiatric evaluation to declare her mentally unfit before the doctor would perform the procedure. So I went to see her in the hospital, and then I cried the entire way home. When she was discharged, she couldn't go back to her house. So I gathered my courage, remember I was in high school, and I asked my mom, can she come stay with us? My mom didn't hesitate. Of course she can. And my mom never told a soul. In fact, we never spoke about it again. Secrecy, shame, silence, danger, even death. That's what defined that time for so many women. And because of Dobbs, that's where we're finding ourselves back again, refighting the battles we had fought and thought we had settled years ago. Last year at the White House, I met with a group of women who shared heartbreaking stories about what a post-Roe world looks like for them, about the terrifying lengths they had to go to just to get the care that they needed. Elizabeth, Anya, Nancy, Austin. They came from different backgrounds in states, Florida, Texas, Louisiana. However, the details of their experiences were similar. They wanted these pregnancies. For them, there was crib shopping and ultrasounds stuck to the fridge. And then, a devastating diagnosis. Doctors who refused them care, pain and humiliation and deadly infections. They described being told that they were in medical danger, but not enough to get the abortions they needed. They talked about, you know, being afraid to tell people what had happened, a feeling like a criminal as they fled their home state to get care. How their spouses felt helpless, terrified for their families. They recalled their stories with a stone-like strength, poised, practiced. But then I would see a memory flash across their eyes as if they were back in the bathroom waiting for the worst or praying that they just make it to safety as they cross that state line. Their voices would crack. They paused to fight back the tears. We did not want this fight. We did not ask for this fight. But if fight we must, and we must, there is no one I'd rather have leading us than President Biden and Vice President Harris.